Hello there, I'm artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Wacom Cintiq Companion 2. After unboxing your companion, the first thing you'll wanna do is plug in the power cable and then hold the power switch for about four seconds until the Cintiq powers on. The very first menus you'll see will want you to choose your language, enter your product key, which is found on the label that's on your power adapter, and you'll need to choose a logon name and a password. So go ahead and enter all that information and then continue. Once Windows is booted up, you should see the start menu with all the tiles. You can go ahead and ensure that your touch is working by tapping one of the tiles. If touch isn't responding, go ahead and hit the top left express key to bring up the settings, turn touch on, and then give it another test. You should be able to tap and click and drag like so. Next, we'll test the pen. Go ahead and take it out of the case. It should work just like your finger. You can tap and drag. You can also hover the pen above the surface to move the cursor without clicking. Using your pen for the first time will bring up the calibration dialog. You'll want to go ahead and calibrate your pen. This will bring up the Wacom tablet properties. Click on calibrate and then very carefully keeping your pen perfectly upright, click on the center of each of the four targets in the corners. Next, we'll want to locate the Windows button or the Start button. That's in the very center of your Express Keys in the middle of the rocker ring. And that'll bring up the Start menu, which gives you access to all of your applications, and it lets you shut down and restart your computer. So before we do any major customization, it might be wise to go ahead and update Windows 8.1 to Windows 10, because it's a free update for now, and Windows 10 is a lot better than Windows 8.1. In the Start menu, do a search for Update, and that'll bring up the Windows Update menu. Go ahead and apply all the available updates to Windows 8.1, because you'll need to do that before you'll be able to update to Windows 10. After those updates have installed and you've restarted, go ahead and do a search for Control Panel, and then click up here where it says View by Category and change that to Small Icons. Then we'll want to look for Windows Update. Now for some reason there's two places to update Windows, and this particular Windows update tends to show you a few more updates, so go ahead and install all of the available updates here, and then when it asks you to restart, go ahead and restart. Next we'll go back to Windows Update one more time, and let's go ahead and look in the optional updates now, and let's go ahead and click on the top left under Name to select all of these updates, and let's apply all of these optional updates as well. Go ahead and let them download and install and then restart again. And then eventually down in the bottom right in the taskbar, you should see a little Windows button. If you click on that, it'll give you the option to upgrade to Windows 10. Now it's going to ask you to wait for the Windows 10 update prompt, but you can just go back to the Windows Update control panel and you can go ahead and click on Get Started and it'll start downloading Windows. Go ahead and let it do its upgrade thing. It could take a little while, so make sure that your tablet stays plugged in. After Windows 10 is finished upgrading, you'll be presented with some privacy settings. I'm going to turn most of this stuff off. I'm going to skip setting up Cortana, and I'm going to skip setting up the default applications for now as well. So once Windows 10 is booted up, you'll see that you can now access the Start menu from the icon on the bottom left. Let's go ahead and open up the Wacom Desktop Center, and let's update our Wacom driver. Let's click on Update, and then Update Drivers. Once the driver is finished updating, go ahead and restart. In the bottom right, we have the notification bar. Let's click on the battery icon. And here we can turn on battery saver to save a little juice. We can also increase or decrease the screen brightness. But if you really wanna optimize your power settings, let's look under the advanced power and sleep options. You can change when your computer goes to sleep or when it powers off. I prefer to set these to never because I'm pretty responsible about turning off my tablet when I'm not using it. And I'd hate for it to turn off automatically while I'm working on something. We can dive even deeper into the power settings by going to additional power settings. And here we can choose custom power profiles. So you could have a profile for while you're plugged in or a profile for while you're running on battery. And you can change the plan settings for each plan. You can feel free to explore the options, but the one thing you might wanna consider changing is the adaptive display brightness, which dims or illuminates the display depending on the lighting in your environment. If you want to go ahead and configure multiple power profiles, you can. Otherwise, these three default profiles work pretty well. So now that we've optimized our power options, let's return to the Start menu. And if Cortana starts bugging you here, just go ahead and click on Not Interested, and I'm sure, and she'll go away. This news feed is also kind of obnoxious. You can click on the three dots in the top right to hide the news feed. Next, let's click on the search bar, and then on the virtual keyboard in the bottom right of the taskbar. And then if we click on the icon in the bottom right of that window, then we'll get some different options for inputting text, such as a virtual keyboard, or you can actually write using your pen to input text, like so. Let's do a search for the control panel and let's open that up and let's take a look at what we can configure in here. 
Let's start with File Explorer options. Now, for me personally, I like each folder to open in its own window. I don't like the folder to replace itself, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that setting there. Another pet peeve of mine is the sounds, so I'm going to go to the Sound Control Panel, go to the Sounds tab, and I'm going to change the sound scheme to No Sounds. I'm going to click on Apply, and then OK. Next, let's go to the Start menu, and let's do a search for Start Settings. I'm going to turn off occasionally show suggestions in start menu and you could feel free to customize any of these other settings if you like. I'm going to go to background and I'm going to change the background to solid color black because that's my preference. I'm also going to go to colors and I'm going to change my accent color to a dark gray color. I like to keep my UI elements neutral because color can influence your perception of color while you're painting. Let's move on down to the lock screen. You can feel free to configure this however you like. I'm going to set my background to a picture. I might change it to a piece of my artwork a little bit later on. I'm also going to turn off Show Windows Background Picture on Sign-In Screen. So let's go to the Themes tab, and let's look under Mouse Pointer Settings, because as it is now, the cursor is kind of small, so I'm going to change the scheme to Windows Black Extra Large, and that's going to give me a big black cursor. That's the cursor that I prefer to use. Next, let's take a look at the desktop icon settings. It's nice to have the computer, the recycle bin, and the control panel available on screen so that you can get to them really quickly. You can see those icons here. I can rearrange them if I want to. You can perform a right click by pressing the button on your pen that's closest to the tip. If I right click on the taskbar, I can get the taskbar properties. I wanna auto hide the taskbar. That'll save me a little bit of screen space. You can also customize the notification area if you like. I'm going to turn off notifications for Microsoft OneDrive because I don't use it. Let's go to the Start menu and let's click on Settings because there's some things we can customize here. Let's go to System and then we'll look under Display. We can change the size of the icons and text. We can also change this to a custom resolution. If you wanted to change this to 1920 by 1080, that might work a little bit better with some of your digital painting applications. Otherwise, things might be a little small because of the high resolution screen. You probably don't need to calibrate your tablet, but here's the color calibration options in case you wanted to do that. You also want to optimize clear type, which controls the appearance of text on screen and makes it easier to read. You just want to follow these steps and basically you just click on whichever text looks clearer to you. You'll have to pick a few options here and it's going to narrow it down to something that looks optimal. You can click on advanced sizing of text to adjust the size of the text manually for title bars, menus, icons, and tooltips. Let's click the back button and let's go to apps and features and let's uninstall some unwanted apps. You just click on uninstall, give it a second to uninstall the app. These apps take up space on your hard drive and they run in the background which eats up processing power and memory. So uninstall anything that you don't think you'll use. You can also uninstall programs from within the control panel programs and features and you can turn Windows features on and off like Internet Explorer 11 if you don't want to use that. Let's move on down to multitasking, which controls snapping. You can drag towards the left or the right to snap a window to the screen. Next is default apps. I'm going to choose to open my photos in the old Windows Photo Viewer. I'm going to go back to the main menu and I'm going to choose devices and then Bluetooth. And I'm going to pair my optional Bluetooth keyboard. Make sure the keyboard's turned on and make sure that it's either charged or plugged in. Enter the code that it gives you and then it should be paired. Next, let's look at the type options. I'm going to turn off autocorrect and play sounds as I type. Feel free to customize this however you like. Next, we'll take a look at the pen options. You can turn off visual effects and the cursor if you like. I'm gonna move on down to autoplay and I'm gonna turn that off, but you can configure it however you like. In order to access the internet, you'll need to set up your Wi-Fi. You can do that under network. You may also wanna look under accounts. You can add a picture for your account and you can connect your email. I'm using Google, so I'll go ahead and connect that. Next, I'll look under sign-in options, and I'll make sure that I don't have to sign in if the computer goes to sleep. And I'm also going to add a pin so that it doesn't take so long for me to log into my tablet here. Let's look under the ease of access panel, and let's go to other options, and we can control the touch feedback, which is what you see when you tap or you click on screen. You can turn that on or off depending on how much feedback you want to see. You can also change it from light to dark. Let's return to the main menu, and let's look under privacy. You can control your privacy settings however you like. I'm going to restrict access to my camera and my microphone. Let's move on down to feedback and diagnostics. You can set this up however you like. And let's check out background apps. You'll want to turn off anything in the background that doesn't need to be running to save power. Let's go back to the main menu and let's take a look at update and security. 
We can look under recovery. And if you don't like Windows 10, you can always roll back to 8.1. You can also reset your PC if you're having any trouble and you can activate Windows if you didn't do that earlier. Now let's take some time to customize the start menu tiles. You can see there's all kinds of different shaped tiles here. You can right click on the tile and you can choose unpin from start if you wanna remove it. I'm gonna remove anything that I don't think I'm gonna use here. It's just as easy to add applications as tiles. You wanna select the application, right click on it and choose pin to start. The snipping tool is really handy for capturing images from the screen. I also like Windows Journal and WordPad, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin those to the start menu. You can also add apps with the Windows Store. For example, I'm gonna search for calculator and I'm going to add the calculator app really quick. And then I'm gonna make sure that I pin that as well so that it's available in my start menu tiles. You can drag the tiles to reposition them and put them wherever you want. I'm gonna arrange these a little bit. Maybe I'll add Wacom tablet properties. Let's go ahead and open the Wacom Tablet properties and let's configure some things like the button on the pen and the pen pressure and the express keys. I'm gonna change my buttons really quick to right click and a modifier of control and alt that'll let me resize my brush on the fly in Corel Painter. I'm gonna customize the pen pressure. I press down kind of firm, so I'm gonna set it a notch towards firm. Let's click on the touch category and then we'll click on my gestures. And this little window here will show you some of the gestures you can use. We'll be looking at gestures in a later video. Let's go to the functions tab. That'll let us set shortcuts for the express keys, but we'll come back to these later as well. Now let's look under options where you can set the left or right handedness, and you can also set the pressure compatibility for older applications. In the bottom left, there's a little toggle for show express view. Express view will show on screen the express key that you're pressing. If you wanna make some changes to your display adapter or your 3D settings, you can do that with the Intel Iris control panel. Let's look at the pen and touch control panel to make a few tweaks here. We'll want to look under the flicks tab and let's turn off flicks because those are more annoying than handy. If we look under touch, we have some control over the touch here as well. If you want to configure your audio card or your speakers, you can look under the Realtek HD audio manager where you can adjust the volume and the panning and your microphone. Let's look under system and you can see the system settings. If we look under advanced system settings, we can go to system protection and turn that on or off. We can also look under remote. I'm gonna disable remote assistance connections because I won't be using that. I'll click apply and then okay. And then last but not least, let's look under user accounts and let's change user account control settings because there's this really annoying thing that pops up all the time and I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this off because I don't need any notifications, but you can leave it on if you like. So that's it for this video about setting up and configuring the Wacom Cintiq Companion 2. In the next video of this series, I'm going to install some digital painting software and test that out.